Hello everyone, um, I'm so happy to be sharing some decorating tips for Songpyeon. Yep, this is Songpyeon. Um, I know it looks Halloween-ish and I decided to have some fun because it's fall. It's um, Halloween next month and so while we're celebrating Chuseok, the Korean Harvest Moon Festival, um, I thought you could, uh, I could also show you how you can have fun uh, next month with your kids or friends um, by making some pumpkins and skulls and um, anything um, you want to have fun making. So um, all the colors here, the color dough um, is made with natural coloring. Um, and I have another video where I show you how to make all the colored doughs. The yellow one is using uh, kabocha squash. The green one is made with uh, mugwort souk uh, powder. The pink is made with raspberries and purple is made with blueberries. These are black sesame seed filling um, that's uh, chopped up uh, chestnuts, canned chestnuts that I bought at the store. It's in a syrup uh, inside a can. So let's make um, some basic songpyeon because you can either just make a basic songpyeon and then decorate the top with some uh, flowers or you can make it into a totally different shape. So first, um, we always make it into a round ball and make it um, an indentation in the middle to make it sort of a small bowl. And we put the filling inside and press it down. And then we want to press the edges so that they're all nicely sealed in. You can press uh, a, uh, once more with your fingers in your hand so that they're all nicely um, compact. And if there are any cracks, um, you can always dip your finger in just a little bit of water and smooth that out. So here's the souk dough, the green one. Uh, made it into a bowl again and um, added some chestnut filling in there. Uh, because uh, at this point, I've made so many songpyeon, my husband is complaining that he has to eat so much. And um, he prefers the chestnut uh than the sesame seed one. So I'm trying to at least make ones that he likes better. Uh, you have no idea how many I made uh, to make this video. So here's the yellow kabocha squash um, dough uh, made uh, with uh, the mepsal garu. And I have another video that shows you how to make it at home. Usually you have to buy the wet uh, frozen mepsal garu at the store to make this. But if you can't, you can always make it at home um, if you follow my recipe. So you saw, okay, so here I just filled it with the filling. But instead of making the songpyeon shape, I rolled it back into a ball. And then here we're going to make a pumpkin. So using a chops, uh, sorry, a uh, toothpick, <laughs> uh, we're going to make indentations. If you have a longer wooden stick that's the same width as the toothpick, you can use that. That's easier. Instead of here, I have to kind of extend it over. But it works just fine, too. So now we have the basic sort of shape of a pumpkin. And I'll show you how to decorate that later. Um, here, we're, I'm going to use a white dough. So that's just plain mepsal garu and um, hot water. Um, to make this dough. Then I made the basic songpyeon, but now I'm shaping it into something else. And um, what I'm doing here is shaping it into a skull. And I'm sure if you're more artistic than I am, you can do a better job, but um, at least I'm trying to get the point across here. So you shape it into a skull. And I decided to use the black sesame seed filling to make the the eyes and and the mouth uh, or lack of it um, so because it sort of I think imitates sort of the uh, the empty black hole inside um, you can try to make a black dough for example and um, attach it on top of it but uh, I had the black sesame fi filling there so I thought why not so I did the eyes 
and for the the um, the mouth or the teeth uh, I just kind of put it uh, pressed it with my fingers um, and shaped it with uh, using toothpicks and so there we go we have um, a skull okay now we're going to make another one uh, this time using the green dough again and um, here we're I'm going to make uh, just showing you again how to make uh, the pumpkin indentations um, using the green dough and now we're going to make some leaves for the pumpkin so using that green dough I, I made it I took a little bit of the dough rolled it into a small ball and then flatten it out with your fingers and sort of shape it into a leaf and so we're going to put that leaf on, on the pumpkin and um, the leaf, if you, you don't have to shape it perfectly. I think it looks more natural when it's a little um, oddly shaped. And I just rolled um, another little piece of the green dough into a long sort of um, stick uh, uh, figure. And I s s squiggled it around to make like a vine uh, for the pumpkin. And see how it kind of looks natural? Um, so I did that one now we're going to and look how sometimes the dough becomes a little too dry and it becomes kind of a brittle then all you need to do is just add a little more water and roll it again okay now I'm just going to shape um, the leaf into actually a leaf that looks more like a pumpkin leaf so um, make sort of the triangle edges of the pumpkin leaf uh, it's a bit exaggerated, but I think it works well. And using the end of a chopstick, I kind of press that leaf into the pumpkin. Um, and then I'm going to just make that little um, stem on top. So I, I'm rolling it into a long uh, stick again. And then I'm going to stick one end uh, of that uh, green um, dough stick and I'm just going to cut it off and there we go we have another pumpkin right now let's uh, make a, a sort of a jack-o-lantern pumpkin so I'm making the the triangle eyes or holes for the uh, whole what would be holes in real pumpkin so making the eyes um, kind of made the mouth um, you can even, you know, do your own own square teeth if you want. Um, and then I, I, I'm adding a little stem top again to the pumpkin. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make calla lily, uh, a mini one, very small one, of course. And we have a yellow dough. I rolled it into a small ball um, and I pressed it into sort of uh, this... Uh, shape where one edge is is narrower and the other edge is more round uh, and and then what we're going to do is take a tiny bit of the white dough and make it into a little ball again roll it and then press it to make it uh, to um, roll it out into a thin um, stick like a shape and um, just take a part of it with the edges um, rolled out even thinner like that to make the spadix or the which is usually the the yellow or the white part in this case because it's a um, yellow calla lily but um, so you do that and so you have the flower now and all we need to do is just make some leaves and we're going to um, shape it into a leaf like that um, I'm doing two here. You can just do one if you'd like. And um, then I'm going to just reshape it a little bit. I think it flattened out a bit too much. So I'm using my toothpick to kind of um, give it more volume. And there we go. And then um, kind of going back, this is sort of the simplest uh, decoration you can do to Songpyeon is just uh, make color. This is white on purple but four little uh, dough balls um, would be flower petals and then a yellow center. Um, and there we go. That's one flower. 
We can um, do purple on white and here I press the purple um, into petal shape and we have a purple flower with a yellow center again. Here's a um, five leaf um, flower that are just basically five little balls. Here now I'm going to uh, make the whole songpyeon into a leaf shape. So here's suk songpyeon uh, with the filling in there, probably chestnut, I forgot. Um, and you just shape it into a leaf, uh, one leaf overall. Um, and it again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think it looks bad, better when it's natural. And then I'm going to again use a toothpick to um, press uh, and make an indentation. Um, to make um, the design of a leaf and um, so there that's a very simple one to do and um, you know the possibilities are endless you can um, have fun with your family and make all different kinds of shapes and designs okay here's a last um, design that I wanted to show you and this is using pink dough although it's kind of hard to see in the this video but uh, using the pink dough I again made some uh, flower petals by pressing the dough into uh, shapes and um, it doesn't make sense actually in reality because it's a white pumpkin shaped bottom but you know you have to have a songpyeon so it's basically decorating the top um, and um, I was thinking I could make this maybe look kind of like a hibiscus kind of flower um, so pink petals and um, yellow um, for the center and um, there we go you know yeah hibiscus is a national flower of Korea so I thought um, it was a great uh, flower to do so there we go and you got to press it down with your toothpick or chopstick to make sure it's um, it's adhere to the rest of the dough so it doesn't fall off once they're cooked. Okay, and here's another quick uh, closer look um, at how um, you make the hibiscus flower. So make four pink petals. Um, and actually I find, um, just to show you here, I made them in advance, but if you make one by one and attach it first, that works better because they tend to dry out pretty quickly, especially if you live in uh, a dry climate like I do in California. Um, so anyway, just shape them. Um, just don't try to make them all look perfect. I think they, they if they look a little different, they look more natural. And press them in in the center. And then let's just finish off by adding that little yellow center and make it a little more of a triangle shape. Well, there we go. We had fun making, I had fun making all the different pumpkin shapes, um, jack-o'-lanterns, um, skull, uh, songpyeon decorated with all sorts of different flowers. Um, and then I'm just uh, showing you how to uh, steam it in the Instant Pot. So for my six quart, I add one cup of water. Um, I do two layers of uh, steamer uh, liners because I want to give it some space between the water and the songpyeon. I'm going to lay out some pine needles. Uh, it's not a must, but um, if you can, it adds great aroma. It also helps it not to stick um, to the liner. Also make sure the songpyeon, don't, uh, they're not touching each other because if they do, they'll stick to each other when they're cooked. And there you go. Look how beautiful they look. Um, the colors are just so much more vivid um, after they're cooked. Okay, one last part. After you make the cook, after the songpin is cooked, uh, be sure to uh, dip them in cold water. Doesn't have to be ice cold, just, you know, uh, cold water. And um, this way it's much easier to take the pine needles off. Also, it seals in the moisture so that the songpyeon doesn't dry off. Uh, otherwise, it will get dry very quickly as it cools down. So this way it kind of stops, um, seals in the moisture. And after you, know, you take it out of the water, then the last step is you want to um, coat it with some sesame oil. 
so I just drizzle some sesame oil and I'm mixing them with my hands gently so our uh, decorations don't come off so um, uh, there you go these are all uh, different um, songpyeons uh, decorated with different flowers here's a closer look um, and see um, how pretty they can be and it was uh, so much fun um, coming up with different designs and um, making them for you well I hope you all enjoyed at least watching and I really hope um, you and your friends and family can get together this Chuseok uh, I know this is coming out a little late but uh, at least you got to do make some songpyeon and uh, for Halloween uh, people with kids um, or friends if you want to have fun uh, make some cute pumpkins um, and skulls or um, aliens or whatever you want to make um, maybe you can make it a tradition uh, and make it uh, every year for for Halloween or even for Christmas I think I might start to uh, do that um, uh, every Halloween from now on anyway I hope uh, everyone stay well and take care and please subscribe